Hey, welcome back to Pete's Garage. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about changing the water pump. Now we're doing this on a 50 horsepower Tahatsu. If you've got a 40 or a 60 horsepower, these steps will work for you. If you don't have a 40, a 50, or 60, then you need to check your owner's manual. All right, you should change the water pump either annually or every 200 hours. Now, if you're running a skiff or some other boat where you're running in shallower water conditions, it's a good idea to go ahead and change that water pump more frequently. All right, to change the water pump, you're gonna need a water pump repair kit, marine grease, a 13 millimeter socket, a 14 millimeter socket, a 3 8 drive ratchet, a 14 millimeter wrench, a flathead screwdriver, and two 10 millimeter wrenches. And as always guys, I've got a list of all the parts and tools you need in the description down below. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do to remove the lower unit is we're gonna trim the motor up so that we have easier access to it. All right, we're gonna start by disconnecting the shift shaft. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the motor in forward. Once we've got the shift shaft removed, we're gonna take this trim tab off because there's a bolt underneath that we have that's holding the lower unit in place. So this is where the trim tab bolts in, but in front of it right here is another bolt. It's also 14 millimeter, and you have to take this bolt off to get the lower unit off. All right, the last four bolts that you have to remove to drop the lower unit are these two, and then there's two more on the other side that are in the exact same place. Now, the best way to do this is to loosen them all up at the same time, pull three of them, but leave one of them still in place so that your lower unit doesn't come flying out. So now that we got three out, we left one in place, so that the lower unit doesn't drop out immediately on us. And this will give us a chance to hold on to the lower unit while we loosen that last one. All right, so we're gonna loosen this up a little bit. Just hit up here, see that it starts to come loose. You can also hit down here to loosen it up if you have to. And then once we got it loose, we're gonna take the last bolt out. All right, with salt water sometimes, as you've seen, it can get a little sticky, so you can take a flathead, come through, and then just... Oh, buddy, there you go. And that's your lower unit. So we're gonna come over to the workbench and set it down. We've got our lower unit on our workbench. Now, if you can, this, to make this process easier, if you have a way to stand this upright, that's gonna help make this all a little bit easier. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove these four bolts. All right, so you see on this bolt, this white, that's salt and corrosion buildup on this bolt. This is another reason you wanna perform this maintenance at least once a year. Now, when you get genuine Tahatsu parts, they're gonna come with brand new bolts. We're gonna grease them up before we put them in. And that's gonna make sure that next time we go to do this, it comes out super easily and we don't have to worry about breaking a bolt off inside of our lower unit. Got all four out now. All right, so we're gonna remove the upper pump case. So as you can see, our impeller stayed with the upper pump case. Sometimes it'll do this, sometimes it'll stay on the shaft. All right, so we're gonna take our flathead and it's a good idea to give your impeller a, a, a once over. You want to look for it, any kind of scarring, breaking, chipping. Um, and if you see any of that, that's a sign obviously that you need to replace it, but you could have issues up in your motor if any of those rubber pieces are making it up through your cooling system. All right, so once we got our impeller out and we've inspected it, we also want to look at the liner and the guide plate. And what we're doing is we're looking for any kind of scratches, scarring, chips, any indication that that impeller hasn't been running smoothly and has been messing with the surface of these two. And that again, it's gonna indicate that we have bigger problems at hand potentially. 
Next, we're gonna take this gasket off the guide plate. Now we're gonna remove the guide plate and gaskets. Oh. Now you'll see right there, sometimes this lower gasket will stick to the bottom of the guide plate. All right, now that we got the guide plate up, we're gonna have to come, we're gonna have to clean this up. Uh, we're gonna use just a basic scraper. The big thing here is to watch your angle because you do not wanna scratch this aluminum up. Okay. Now that we've got the top of the lower pump housing cleaned up, we're gonna take the liner out of the upper pump casing. This is what we've pulled out of the water pump. We've got the impeller, we've got the guide plate, and then we've got the liner. And these are the old parts, these are the new parts, okay? So if you look at the liner, you can see this little groove right here. If you look at the new one, you'll see there isn't a groove. So that's a sign of wear that we don't wanna see. Same thing on the guide plate. You see right in here, we've got a groove. And then on the new one, no groove. Now the impeller, I know the impeller looks good, but you see how these blades are bent. Like, you see how these blades are bent and on the new one, they're straight. This is actually gonna affect the performance of this impeller where when these blades start getting set like this with this angle on them. So it's a good thing we're changing this out. I know it doesn't look like it's in terrible shape, but as, as I've pointed out, there is some wear and tear on these parts. All right, so we've got our water pump repair kit. It's gonna come with a new impeller, a new guide plate, a new liner, a top and a bottom gasket for the guide plate. It's also gonna have a key for the impeller and then four new bolts. So before we start putting everything together, you wanna make sure that you have these two guide pins in place. Now these have a tendency to come out during the process. So just make sure you don't lose them and make sure they're in place before you start putting everything back together. First thing we do, we get a little bit of grease, put a little bit of grease on this gasket. All right, now we got a little bit of grease on the bottom. We're gonna slide it down, use those guide pins to line it up and get it, get it in place. We're gonna use these guide pins to get the gasket in place. All right, we're gonna get a little bit more grease. Throw a little bit on the top of that gasket. All right, so before we put the guide plate on, we're gonna throw a little bit of grease right here in the center where the, the impeller is gonna ride. Now we're gonna slide the guide plate on. We're gonna grease this next gasket up. There's an easier way to do this, but TJ won't tell me. <laughs> Here in Pete's Garage, we don't mind greasy hands. Greasy hands and greasy hearts. Ew. No, that's not a thing. All right. All right, now that we've got both sides of this gasket grease, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna slide that into place. Now you'll notice, guys, these guide pins are gonna make sure you put these gaskets in the right orientation. We're gonna put this keyway in, a little bit of grease on there. Now you'll see this notch in the shaft. That's where that keyway is gonna set. And we're gonna set this keyway down in this notch on top of the shaft. If that notch isn't facing upright, all you gotta do is turn your shaft, turn your propeller until that notch is sitting upright. Before we drop the impeller down, we're gonna put a little bit of grease on the drive shaft splines. Now we're gonna slide the impeller into place. Make sure that impeller lines up with the keyway. Make sure the keyway stays in place. Set it all the way down. Boom. Boom. You got your impeller in. All right, we're gonna put the liner, we're gonna add, put the liner back into the upper gear case housing. Put a little bit of grease. It's just gonna help keep this liner from falling out when we start moving this case around. So when you put the liner in, you see there's a notch in here. You wanna make sure that notch is lined up with the notch in the gear case housing. There's gonna be a little bit of lip around the outside. So this lip, this lip's just gonna basically help, help this liner seal against the gasket once we get the housing put back together. All right, we're gonna put some grease on the inside of the liner. We're gonna slide the upper pump case into place. Now we're gonna slide it till it hits the impeller. 
and we're gonna turn the drive shaft in a clockwise direction while maintaining pressure on the impeller. And we're gonna to start to feel the impeller blade sinking into the housing and we'll keep turning the drive shaft as we move the pump housing into place. Boom. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our bolts back in. Before we put them in, we're gonna put some grease on them. Guys, if you haven't caught, caught on, the theme of this is grease everything. The reason we're using grease, and this is marine grade grease, and the reason we're using it is to help protect all of this stuff from corrosion and make our lives easier in the future. Right, whenever you're tightening down on a gasket, one of the things you want to keep in mind is you want to go in a diagonal fashion. So you want to tighten, say, we're going to go this bolt here, here, and then here. And this is going to help set this pump housing down squarely so we don't damage the gasket at all. All right, now we got our lower unit ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to grease up the bolts that hold the lower unit in place. Oh, I went a little overboard. All right, time to put the lower unit back in. All right, so sometimes to get the splines to line up, you got to turn the prop a little bit. Once you get those lined up, the lower unit. It's gonna go right back into place. So now I've got it in place. We're gonna grab one of our bolts. Our first bolt in just to hold it so now we don't have to hold on to the lower unit. It's gonna stay in place. We can go ahead and get the rest of our bolts in place. We're just gonna start with the four on the outside for now. All right, last one. We're gonna tighten up these four outside bolts. You see I got a little bit of gap. As we tighten it, that gap's gonna close. And again, just like we did with the pump housing, we're, not, we're gonna tighten them in a crisscross pattern. Nope. <clears throat> All right, next, next bolt. Now we're gonna put our trim tab back on. Next, we're gonna reconnect the shift shaft. Next, what we wanna do is we're gonna, we're gonna test it. We're gonna to come to neutral. You see our propeller can spin freely, so we know we're in neutral. We'll come back to forward. So we see shift shaft goes up. Propeller can't spin freely. Come back to neutral. Come to reverse. And again, our motor's going in reverse. Hope that helped you out. Thanks for following along on this maintenance series and thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.